Now, as you may know, the National Assembly is supposed to be a parliament of the representatives of the Nigerian people, this country's supreme legislative authority charged with making laws and ethical decisions about how best to run Nigeria efficiently. So, when that parliament is hit by corruption scandals and bribery is used to win influence and power, it puts democracy under attack. And that appears to be what is happening now as the leadership contest in the Assembly enters a more urgent phase. According to those in the know, there are so many scandals to be uncovered in this race, so many unscrupulous contenders determined to achieve power by crook if necessary. And money, lots of it, is only one part of the frenetic goings-on behind the scenes. So, with senators and House members alike said to be lining up for cash handouts from individuals only too willing to stomp up the dosh in return for sucking up their votes or the promise of their votes, how unpalatable is this latest high-profile swindle likely to be for the country they've sworn to defend and protect? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Senator Enyinaya Abaribe of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, or APCA, who was recently re-elected to the Senate for a sixth term. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. And I have to say that this is the first time you're making a television appearance, I think, since you won yes. uh, your, your term. So we're, we're very delighted that you, you came to, that you, you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're making your appearance on our program. And uh, congratulations on your re-election to the Senate. I mean, you retained your seat, you defeated Governor Okezie Ibazo in that race, and equally importantly, you survived the Peterby tsunami <laughs> <laughs> in the southeast. You ran on the ticket of APGA. How narrow an escape was that for you? Well, let, uh, Charles, thank you. Uh, let, let, let me correct something. Uh, mm. This is not the sixth time. This is the fifth okay, time. Okay, it's the fifth time. Yeah, the right. first time I came here was in 2007. Right, so this is your fifth run. The fifth, yes. And your fifth victory. Precisely. Okay. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, yeah, it was a narrow escape. Uh, and I, I think I'd, I had said it. Yes, at, yeah. um, that, that's uh, your on quote, the day we were actually. Getting, and I said, yeah. oh, that there was this obi dati wave and yeah. uh, well that what it means is that for those like me who survived it it means that our people actually had something they saw in me mm. and they now said no, no 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 this is not part of those that we have to get rid of you know so but if you remember in our last conversation mm. when i was in the village and you were talking about incumbency. I told you, yeah, I said yeah, that on that day, the, yeah, that is true. on the day of the election, mm. that everybody will be in his place and that nobody can come from outside yeah. to come and be a kingmaker. So that, of course, is what happened. Mm. So I'm still very grateful to the people of Abia South Senatorial District who saw me as um, their champion and that I will always be there for them. But of course, you won, but you, um, while you got through in the Senate race, your appeal to the people of Abia State to vote for the governorship candidate of APGA, your party, Professor Gregory Ibe, fell on deaf ears in, in spite of the fact that you invoked the name of the founder of APGA, the late Emeka Odumegwa Juku. That's... Um elections for you. Mm. <laughs> you you may just think that you will get what you want but sometimes it just doesn't go that mm. way yes and That's and okay. this is now your fifth tenure at the national assembly as you said precisely um what is your assessment of how the assembly has evolved in that time actually uh, just when you were reading out um or your, in your earlier comments yeah. i was a little bit um Bothered. Let, let, let me say why I'm bothered. Mm. We have never in the National Assembly had a situation where you actually run for the office of Senate President and so forth and put billboards and put mm. posters. And I mean, you go there now. You see 
everyone who is running. <laughs> it's, it's like a veritable <laughs> election campaign. Yeah, usually. Uh, because this is an election that will be done by a known set of persons. Mm. Either those in the House of Rep or those in the Senate. In the Senate 109, of course, the person who is running will also vote for himself. Mm. And then in the um, House of Rep 360. So, we are just so worried. What is this new uh, ethos? Why, why is everyone so, um, you know, run all over the place? Mm. When I came in 2007, of course, nobody came around to, I mean, the job of who becomes Senate president. It's just first among equals. Mm. Everyone did an election to come. And so, usually, what happens is there are two sets of, I would say, two, uh, two groups that determine who becomes either the speaker, the Senate president, the deputy speaker, deputy Senate president. The members determine it. Mm. Secondly, because the parliamentary tradition is that the party that has the majority tends to make suggestions to their party and say, I am representing my constituency, but my party is ABGA, which means that even though this is my fifth time mm. and I'm eminently qualified to be Senate president, I know I can make it because I have to go and appeal to members of other parties who have the numbers. Mm. So it's always a numbers game. And so what we do is we stay and then the person who did, wants to be the a uh, senior president who wants to be part of what we're doing, we now approach each member. But I was very surprised and very worried when you're talking about corruption. I mean, there's no, there shouldn't be any such thing. Mm. Yes. But, but, but in the context of what you're saying, what do you think will determine that um, leadership contest this time? Will it be Bola Tinubu? Will it be the money and the bribes we're told is changing hands, or, or will it be the senators themselves? No, I think the senators themselves. I think you should forget every other, um, every other thing you have said mm. can only come in as a suggestion. Let me just say, okay, the party can say this is where we want to go. But it had happened before that it didn't go there. Mm. The party can say this is where we want to go, and everyone goes there. I mean, when we came in 2007, uh, President Obasanjo just simply brought all of us together mm. and said, uh, this is the Senate president, this is going to be the deputy and all that. And then we just went to the floor and executed what the party wanted. So, the persons who are going to be on the floor that day will make that decision. Their decision will now be influenced, I would say, by maybe the party saying this is where you ought to go uh, for reasons mm. that they will give. Uh, and then that, that, that's what I think. I, yeah, but, but, I, but you I, did. I, I don't say this question of the okay, the money. And, uh, no, that, that, yeah, that, you, that, but, that does not but, but you determine did, how people vote. Yeah, but you did mention, though, that this is a very unusual type of senate leadership race or national assembly yeah what i meant by race. that is that usually mm. we don't print billboards we don't print handbills we don't mm. run all over the place we don't go to television uh, you don't uh, drive uh, on uh, on the highway going to the airport and you see somebody saying i want to be speaker <laughs> no <laughs> this is something that's going to be done by 300 right. and something people right there. But what so about what the are you telling aspect? the rest of Nigeria? What, they're not the people who yeah, are going yeah, to absolutely. make that well, that, That's decision. a good point. Yeah. But what about the money aspect? Because we are hearing, I mean, I've, I've heard it from very credible senators, yeah. 
that money was being handed out to them to nah, try and sway them one way or another? I don't, I don't think so. I, th I think that sometimes, you know, uh, like we are in Nigeria, most of the time that people are running all over the place, mm. oh, he has done this, oh, he has brought this. You can't have any evidence of that. I don't. Well, I don't have any evidence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the body. But, but I'm, I don't know, I'm just, saying, it's not it's 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 speculation. That, that's that why we're saying that it, it is said to be happening. Ah, because well, I've been told off the record by senators that they've been offered money. I don't think so. I think that. Um, uh, just take it from me. So you haven't that, been offered any money? Uh, no, nah, I haven't. Uh, take it from me that on the day, I think it will be the 13th right. of June, after the proclamation, decisions are going to be taken on the floor. Mm. Anyone who now wants to be Senate President, he has a job cut out for him. The set of people who are going to make that decision are simply in the Senate, 108. Mm -hmm. Because you want to be, of course, you're going to vote for yourself. So you go, you go to that whole 108 mm. and talk to them, present your manifesto, tell them this is where you want to go. Deliberately, what you do is get as many people to back you mm. as you can. That's all. Right. But are you yourself playing any role um, in the emergence of that Senate president? If so, what key insights can you give us um, from your point of view and the point of view of your party? Well, Abigail? the only role I play is I, I can give a historical perspective. And having been in the Senate four times, going to the fifth time now, I have a repository of knowledge yeah. of how everything has played out. Mm. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I can always offer advice. Basically, the basic advice is there is always an adversarial relationship between the executive and the Senate. The public watches the Senate and the House of Rep to see how they protect the public. Right. When the Senate is seen as bending over backwards, that's when you now start hearing, oh, this is a very compliant Senate, right. this one is uh, this and that. that, that that's just what it is. Mm. So whoever is going to be Senate president has his job cut out for him. Of course you cooperate with the executive, but you have to know that the people, because each person mm. represents a constituency. I represent Abia South. And of course, I'm not going to be there. And you, uh, there's a, a process that is coming from the uh, uh, federal government that I don't want because it impacts negatively. My job will now be to get up and say, no, mm. if the Senate whoever is Senate president or whoever becomes the speaker or whatever, shut you down and say, no, 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 let us take what this goes against your people's interest. Then, of course, what it brings is rancor. Mm. That is what happened. But, I mean, if, if, if uh, I mean, do, do you have any sense at all of who, of who seems likely to emerge as I, the I Senate think, president? I think if you, look, if you look at what is going on, mm. you could see from now who among all the contenders that you are seeing with more people right. going around with the person, helping, being in and around that So basically, area. God's I mean, will at that you, can see it, you can see that it's, 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 it's looking that way. Right. So if he does emerge, what kind of Senate leader do you expect him to be? Or has the answer to that question not yet been written? Well, I doubt whether you can anticipate what someone is mm. going to be before. Yeah, but, but, but people vote on that basis. Yeah, well, uh, I have known him right. from the time he was a commissioner to the time he was a governor mm. to the time he was in the Senate as my colleague. So you can see that we have had a lot more insight into. And of course, the first thing that a Senate president does is that you must have your ear on 
the floor mm. of the Senate so that you know exactly how the you know the the floor is uh, tilted mm. you know you may have an idea that you're going this way but the whole floor is want to go this way and uh, of course um during the time that the cine started and all that there's been a lot of stability now there used to be something called banana peels all over the place <laughs> <laughs> and, and that that you to also um determine how things flow mm. but i think that a Senate president must, as a matter of um, policy, know that you cannot go to bed with the executive. Cannot. Mm. You do that, you lose the trust of your colleagues, you lose the trust of Nigerians, and you are going to be written off. Mm. That's just what. Yeah, that, that, that's a good, that's an important point. That sense of independence must be maintained, be maintained. yeah yes. but you, here you are of course you you've just this is your first term as an upga senator i mean the last four terms you were a pdp <laughs> I, was a, I was a pdp, a PDP senator, PDP senator. Yes. So, so i wonder what what the chemistry is like for you in the national assembly now well uh, there's hardly anybody in the National Assembly I don't know mm. have not interacted with don't 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 uh, forget that those you see in APC today, we are also in AC, P, yeah. ANPP, and so forth. Yeah, PDP. They were in the AC, yeah. somewhere in PDP. So we have always interacted at all right. levels. And at a particular time, I was also in AMPP. I was even a governorship candidate in AMPP in 2003. So we have always so it's interacted. All about, it's all about musical chairs, well, really. Well, it looks like we just I continue. Mean, I, I, we, I we move from one uh, point to the other. But what has always remained is that we have mutual respect. Mm. We know each other. We can also state our positions very Clearly. Right. So what is your position now as the inauguration draws near? We saw today that um, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, congratulating, well, they'd already congratulated him anyway, but Senator Tinubu, <laughs> but now calling him up and having a chat with him about strengthening ties and, and forging a kind of relationship going forward. I mean, you, you've been almost like a permanent opposition person for, for a while. I mean, whether it's APCA or PDP, um, we, we saw um, Atiku Abubakar responding to that in a text message, uh, in a tweet today. Uh, what is your sense of, how, um, of all of that, I mean, as, as the inauguration approaches? Well, what, what, what I think, hmm. really, is that well, in internationally, the, the, uh, we as uh, Nigerians and we as Africans, we tend to think that, oh, they need to see from our perspective. But the point really is that for the United States, their national interest is what is important to them, mm. not your own national interest. And so... For whoever is Secretary of State, whatever he's going to say, whatever he's going to do will be determined by his own national interest. And whatever yeah. he does, well... Well, that's, know, a, that's a good point. That's exactly what they were going but, to but do. But you can see Atiku's tweet there. He's saying, I'm in disbelief that Secretary Blinken called Tinubu a contradiction to the publicly stated position of the U.S. and Nigeria's 2023 presidential election. This is inconceivable, considering that America, as the bastion of democracy is well briefed on the sham election of February the 25th to give legitimacy to the widely acknowledged fraudulent election in Nigeria can be demoralizing to citizens who have hedged their bets on democracy and the sanctity of the ballot. What do you, what's your reaction to that? Uh, to Atiku's mm. tweet, uh, I, I think he's correct in the sense that the United States cannot be sending out signals mm. one on this side and one on this side you must be consistent so that you know exactly where you stand i know where i stand i have always felt as an opposition person that the buhari administration did not do well and all i want is let this affliction not continue mm. now that is going fine 
let, let it just go away. Now, on the other hand, I have been also confronted by some of my people, my colleagues, mm. who say, oh, uh, the Southeast, uh, we're not being treated well, we are being given uh, position and all that. And I, well, my, my reaction is simple. What is it that you're going to give us now mm -hmm. that is not the presidency that the Southeast wants? Mm. We have had Senate president. We have had deputy Senate president. So you're not going to entice us with that anymore. If you're going to talk about equity, justice, and all that, it's not going to be based on giving us Senate presidency or deputy Senate. Right. No. Equity, justice, and all that is that you're going to give us the presidency. That is where we have not ever reached mm. since uh, Azikiwe time. And every Nigerian felt that this is the best for us. And so, now that the battle is well with the judiciary, let us also wait for that to right. Yeah, okay. okay. Senator Abaribe, I want to thank you very much indeed. I know you've got a, <laughs> other things you have to do this evening, so yes. I want to thank you for coming in. And Senator Egyne Abaribe is uh, a senator of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, or APGA, who was recently re-elected to the Senate for a fifth, fifth time. Thank you very much My pleasure. indeed. My pleasure.